Okay, hopefully everybody's got a seat by now. If you haven't, there's another one up front here and there's a few cozy seats. At the, so I see Brian and others at the back. There's some cozy seats over here if you want to sit down. Instead of standing at the back, you're welcome to. Uh, welcome everybody to Ingenuity Labs. My name is Josh Marshall. I'm the director here. And for those who don't know, uh, the Ingenuity Labs Research Institute is a a newish, I guess, research institute on cap campus where we're trying to bring together those researchers who are working in the space of robotics and applied AI. And it is my pleasure today to introduce one of our faculty members and also Mitchell Professor, uh, and Professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here, uh, Professor Jaudan Zhu, who um, is an expert in natural language processing. And of course, the talk of the year is about ChatGPT. So Thank you to Jardin for, for, I think, being quite a brave person and standing up in front of an audience and talking about a topic that is somewhat controversial, and I suspect that many of you are here because of that. So please join me in uh, a short round of applause and thanking uh, Jardin as we pass it on to him. So welcome, Jardin. Uh, thank you very much, Josh. Uh, can you hear me in the back? OK. Thank you much. Um, so, yeah, as Josh said, this is a buzzword these days. But today's talk, I'm going to uh, try to um, balance both sides, like uh, the technical side and the non-technical side. Um, um, before I start, like uh, just uh, a quick survey, how many of you have already used uh, ChatGPT before? <laughs> okay, I think I, I, I asked a wrong uh, uh, question. I should ask uh, who hasn't used yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so the title of today's talk is like uh, ChatGDB and so basically, what they can do and cannot do yet. So, um, so again, so um, so actually, I'm going to start my talk with some examples. I know many of you have already tried many, many different examples, but those are part of my um, 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 favorite examples. So uh, the first one, you can ask to write a poem, uh, prison Kingston in Ontario. So I can quickly try it, and it's actually uh, quite good. So. Again, so if you pay uh, $20, you can actually access ChatGPT4 instead of GPT, ChatGPT. You can ch check, you have access to GPT4, which is, uh, I think, it'll be more, more advanced. So write a poem, Praise in Kingston, Ontario. So you mentioned many sites in, 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 in Kingston, and I think, uh, again, so this is a real generation. It's not like a, they also mentioned Queen's University are here. Okay, so it's, this is generated, it's not copied anywhere, uh, but um, it's generated by the machine over here. So this is one example, you can see it mentioned different uh, facts actually, also try to adjust the style to be a, like, like a poem. My second favorite example is like this, write a rhythm, uh, hip hop style battle to discuss Unix versus a Microsoft uh, on Windows, and make sure the Unix win. <laughs> uh, you can choose the other way, you can, you can enforce them, make, make sure like uh, Windows win. So, this is what you're going to get if you... <laughs> yeah, sorry if you're in the back and you cannot say it, but I can, I'm going to post a post. You can try those examples, very interesting. So they are not only like uh, the facts is here, and also the writing in the very stylish ways, like uh, make sure the styles also match, match the what you want. So I'm gonna stop over here again. So those are generated by, um, by ChatGPT or GPT-4. I'm not gonna try all of them of this example, but I'm gonna give uh, the example, briefly discuss this example before I start my talk. So my third example is basically, uh, start test whether ChatGPT has some common sense. Uh, for example, the question is here, should I move my known after 9 p.m.? So basically the answer they're gonna give you is quite reasonable. They give you, okay, after, after dawn, so you should not because it's not best of the, for, your, for your grass. But at the same time, you should consider your neighbor. So they know this kind of social things and also like a common sense. I mean, then my next example is can I fit an elephant into a refrigerator? So basically they're gonna say, okay, the size you cannot fit in. Also, if you fit, really can fit in, it's too cold for elephant. 
And then you can ask whether you can fit them in garage. They're going to say, OK, um, um, depends on how large your garage. So you can see they actually have some common sense, and which is actually really good. And then there's a, a bunch of more examples. Some of the examples are very famous, like John cannot lift his son because he's too heavy. Heavy. Who is too heavy? Human beings knows like a, because his son is too heavy, he cannot lift his son. And if you, if you just change one word, like a John cannot lift his son because he's too weak. Who is too weak? John is too weak. So to answer this question, you need common sense. This is a famous question. It's called a winner grammar cha uh, challenge to test computer's common sense. You use a natural language. But again, so for those questions, ChatGPT are very good, actually. And then you can actually ask, ask it to write a Python code to implement tic tac toe and it's going to write a code for you. And my favorite crash, uh, uh, demo I already prepared for it. I'm going to show you. It's like a, uh, for many of you use Excel. Actually, there's many functionality that can, you can start to use. For example, you can ask ChatGPT to generate a code to highlight all the value in your, in the, in your Excel sheet if the value is higher than 200 or 300. Or if that value is between 200 and 1,000, you can highlight those, those cells in your Excel sheet. So basically, what you need to do, just uh, I myself do not know how, write, how to write this code in Excel, because Excel has macro. You can write code to control Excel form. But I don't know how to do it. But uh, ChatGPT can do it. If you ask ChatGPT over here, you can just ask. It can take you, take, tell you how to write this code to, to open Microsoft Excel and write, click some buttons to open some windows and just copy the, the rest of the, cell, the code to your Excel. And this can highlight the form, the, the spreadsheet for you. OK, just copy those code to your Excel. And then they can highlight the sheet for you if the value is between some range. So, so what I did is like, uh, I'm not going to show off them. But again, so I copied the code over here. Uh, this is one, one example, uh, one tool example I, I, I create. So if I copy that code here there, and then say um, click click that code and then click run, it's going to highlight everything for me if the value is over 100, between 100 and 200. So you can, you can you basically give uh, ChatGPT different comments. So this is just a lot of potential, because uh, once they have this cap capability, then what you can do is very easily, uh, Microsoft and any other company can con connect this with, with TTS, or with, uh, with a speech recognition. You can just see by your own words. Uh, highlight this spreadsheet uh, with the value between 200, 200 and 1,000 for me. Highlight it with red color. And then they can highlight it for you. So far, I have to type it. But you know, recently, they have auto GPT. It's connected many applications with ChatGPT, and then you can do this many things automatically. So this is an, another of my favorite example. So I'm going to show um, one more advanced example in the next slide. <coughs> so this example is from a, a, a paper called, called uh, Explain Answers with Intelligent Tree. Basically, uh, the task here is like I give you a hypothesis. And I give you many av potential evidence. For the hypothesis, eruptions can cause plants to die. And the main evidence saying eruptions can emit lava. And eruptions produce ash cloud. Plants have green leaves. And producer will die without sunlight. sunlight. So basically, uh, the question is whether ChatGPT can find evidence here to support the hypothesis. And I change this uh, question a little bit. I make a prompt over here to say, oh, this is my claim. I gave you five potential evidence. And I told you uh, the number two and the number four are right. And to, to prove that claim is, wrong, is right, so which evidence I still need? So the, the GP, ChatGPT can tell you they still need f number five. I, I'm not giving them this. This is true answer. I just gave this prompt to, to ChatGPT. So basically, ChatGPT can know some facts, and it can also do some reasoning. And remember, reasoning is a core of AI. Uh, if, if computer can do reasoning, um, they can do a lot of things. So basically, uh, based on that, it's not surprised. Like um, recently, there are some papers to discuss. Like a uh, use ChatGPT start to run uh, chemical experiments. So this is one paper, I uh, just posted in, in April. <coughs> so in this paper, it's called. Uh, it's, it's a. It's published by uh, some prof uh, many. Some professors, some uh, researchers, and colleagues at Mellon, they use ChatGPT to conduct some uh, chemical um, experiments. So basically, the framework is like a, it's like this. So basically, you have some questions. Say, okay, to uh, uh, synthesize some something for me, and then they can ch uh, search Google and, 
and, uh, uh, and then search code that need to use. And then once they get information, they get step by step by using ChatGPT to organize this information. And then they can send that to some lab, um, um, some, some robots to do this. They can actually send this to, uh, maybe, maybe some of you know this better than me, but they can send this to, um, they can send whatever the information they get for to this, uh, it's called liquid handling system to do the experiments. And then it's going to show your results. So this is a paper published very recently. Um, so based on this planning and reasoning capabilities, there's many things that can be done potentially. But again, so uh, don't be, um, I mean, we don't want to, be to make this too high because uh, the problem is like, uh, even there's potential there as I talk today, um, there's a huge limitation that um, if we want to do this safely, um, trustably, there's a lot of way to go. So this is just some example. And then I'm going to start with my uh, like, um, talk today. So in my talk today, I'm going to uh, just uh, um, start with some example. I'm going to ask, ask the question, what is ChatGPT? How does it work? And why does, make, does it matter? And I'm going to talk about why it does it matter from itself, its language model. But in general, the framework here can be a foundational model for other um, information. For example, if you don't if you train the model, like uh, those kind of pre trained model, you not only use the text and language data, if you use the sensor data, they can also learn from sensor data as well. So this is not just language model, it's also a, a foundation model. So I'm going to brief talk to them, and then I'm going to briefly talk about limitation, and then I'm going to summarize my talk today. So what is ChatGPT? So ChatGPT is a large language model with a friendly user interface. So large language model, what is large language model? So I'm going to talk about soon. But a basic lang large lang language model is like a, whenever you give me a sentence or a word, I can tell you the probability of this sentence or word. So if you consider you want to translate from French to English, given a French sentence, you have many possible English sentences. So which one has the highest probability? If the mo model can give me this answer, we can, I can basically tell you which sen English sentence is the best translation. So language model is a, just, just that. But why it's a friendly user interface is matter here? Because language model can, can save a lot of information there, knowledges, common sense. But how people can access that? Before ChatGPT, it's not hard, it's not easy to straightforward to access information uh, from language model by human being, by, 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 like a, by the public. Like a researcher know how to do that by right program. But ChatGPT provides a friendly user interface. You can say, okay, friendly user interface, what do you mean? So I, well, I just show the interface. That interface is not that, that, that fancy. But when I said it's friendly user interface, it provides some ways to provide the public to, to access knowledge in language model. So I'm going to talk details. So about keywords, is like ChatGPT is a language model with a friendly user interface. You can type your question, and they can give you an answer. So this is some more example that I'm not going to show, but again, so basically you can, based on several more example, basically you can ask a ChatGPT to write ads about iPhone 12, and the target customer is 15 to 18 years old. They are, they are going to write this. If you tell the target customer is senior, they are going to focus on like a screen size and um, many different things. Okay, so why ChatGPT causes waves? So again, so it's a friendly used interface. Everyone use it. And the quality of ChatGPT is uh, much better than previous version, previous language model. This is the second reason. The second reason is there's many um, software, hardware you can build in your system by embedding ChatGPT into your system. Uh, I'm going to go to details. But again, so uh, ChatGDB uh, is posted a lot at the end of last year. But before that, there's GPT, GPT-2, GPT-3, Instruct GPT, and different version. And if you ask a sentence question here, you can see the answer it's different. In the older version, uh, the, the answer generated is some, at the very beginning, it's not even grammatical. And then it's getting better and better and better. So why it's getting better and better? So I'm going to briefly talk about the reason. So I all, before I go to details, I also want to mention, there's many different language models. ChatGPT is just one of them. And there's a promise from Google. Uh, there's different language models existing over there. So many companies are building their language models. So, so that's why I called my talk, it's like a chat GPT and AOCUS, because uh, there's many different similar models up there. So how does chat GPT work? So I'm gonna start from a simple example to help you understand why, how chat GPT works. So basically, I'm gonna start from this thing. So the sentence called shared joy is a double joy, and shared sorrow is. You should put a half sorrow over here. Shared joy is a double joy, shared sorrow is half sorrow. So if I remove this word half, and ask a model to predict it, so if 
if you train the model to predict this, model need to understand not only English language, but also some common sense. So this key idea of train, 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 train language model is to remove some word purposely and train the model to predict that and tune the model to predict that correctly. So, so basically, um, the, the, the network can be a little bit complicated um, because, uh, the, but the key idea is easy, simple. So key idea is to predict that word and know the history. I put the history, which is a word in front of this what word you want to predict, or, or in front of it. Put that in the network. This is deep neural networks. And then the network is going to output some word. If the output is correct, then we do not tune the model. If the output is incorrect, we pass the error to tune the model to make it, make it pre predict this word correctly. So remember, um, we have a huge amount of uh, training data, all the library books, all the Wikipedia. You can use all the, all, the, all the novels in the history. You can remove the words. In this way, you can give basically unlimited amount of training data to train your model. So basically, this ChatGPT is a typical pre-trained objective is to predict a purposely removed word. Often, it's just next word. You just predict a word by word. But sometimes you have you just pre uh, predict uh, remove some word in between the sentence. That's going to result different architecture. But the idea is here is just remove some word, train the model, predict it. So I'm going to ask two questions here. The first question is why such model are powerful. Okay. So the reason is think about it. So if the model can really predict that word. Again, it's not going to see the grammar, but it's also know some common sense. Like a shared joy is a double joy, but shared sorrow is not double sorrow. It's half sorrow. So think about the common sense they want to predict that word. And again, so if you are not giving me language data, if you give me sensor data, if you remove some, some part of the sensor to train the model in that way, the model can, answer, answer, can, can understand the regularity in your sensor, sensor data. So that's why this model is called a foundational model. Actually, in Stanford, there's a new center it's called a uh, research center for foundation, foundation models. It's trying to um, build a centers around those kind of uh, big models. And those models can have impact not just in language. The second question I ask is, uh, why such model may be a double-edged sword? So you can see the good thing is that you save everything in the model. The model can make prediction for you. But the, the, the bad thing is what? The bad thing is whenever you save everything in the, in the model, so everything is saved in the parameters in the model, numbers. And you lose, basically, you do, need, you do not explicitly, explicitly say things inside the model. That's maybe a fund, fundamental drawback of the, of the model. I'm going to give you one more example to convince you that. So think about this example. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to tell me how to drive from Queen's University to buy world market in Ottawa. So I'm going to type it over here. Drive from Queen's University to buy world market in Ottawa. So. <clears throat> so to drive from Queen's University to Kingston to buy world market in Ottawa, follow this step. Head east to the Union Street, University Avenue. Turn left on the Sir uh, John McDonough Boudoir and keep doing this. It's actually pretty good if you can say the generate answer. But think about why this is going to be, this is amazing. Because all the model here, they do not, you never see any tables inside of this model. You didn't say like a, there's a table there, you can say, okay, how to drive from, uh, how to go the highway from here uh, to 401. So there's no table here. Everything is just numbers here. I'm going to show you this just the parameter of your model. So how they can generate from that, that parameter to generate actually that, that sentence. That's amazing if you think about this. So this is why I call this a double edge sword. One edge, it's very good. You can eff efficiently generate things. You don't need to use Google sometimes. Because the, the, the model digests everything for you and generates stuff for you, like poem. And as um, sometimes the reliability of the, um, of, the, of the generated stuff is sometimes out of control because everything is saved over here. And then I'll give you another example. If I give you a case here to say, OK, somebody in Kingston uh, get the thumb injured, how much we should pay this person? And sometimes they're going to use the law from the US to handle this case. 
One reason is because the model do not know where, which parameters is about the laws in the US, which, which parameters is about law in, in Canada. So you can see it's going to mess up things. things. So this is why I call it double edge sword over here. This is high level things you may keep, keep, uh, keep in mind so far, but I think uh, um, I'm going to go to some details about uh, the model itself. Okay, so how actually we, tr we when, when we feed this, uh, these words into the parameter, what actually happened over there? Because we are in the engineering lab, I do want to like, give some, a little bit more details, probably not. So basically, if you give me a sentence like this, the service of that small bank is not too bad, I would like to recommend it, for example. So then, the first step is every word is, convert co is converted to a vector. Okay, so why that is good? So if you think about it, if you con con convert each word into two-dimensional vector, that means each word is a, is a point in a two-dimensional space. So if we put that, if we put that, you can see this figure. Again, so, so sorry for the phone set a bit small, but I'm, again, I'm going to post the, the slide later, but I can explain over here. So you can basically say this is all words. Each, because each word is a two-dimensional two vector, so each word, is, if you represent it in the planet, so it's going to be um, one point. So you can say this, this cluster is uh, words like a because, if, and. Uh, those are not, and those, those parties are white, different colors. And, um, and there's, there's a much little more, those words. Okay, so basically the first step is encode the words as a vector. And then the next step, step is like, a, we are gonna consider the words meaning based on the context. context. So for example, bank. Bank has two meaning, river bank and financial bank. So which bank this means, it depends on the context. So that means, uh, this is the first layer of network. Each word, just the, each, each vector is just represented a word. In the next layer, each vector is gonna represent the word in the context. So that means this vector is gonna still remember, uh, represent a bank, but it's gonna represent a bank in the context. So how they can represent that? They are gonna allow the context to modify the meaning based on the context, okay? So basically, if the bank see the word service here, it's more like this is a financial bank instead of a river bank, the, the, although it's not 100%. So it's gonna allow the word service to change the meaning of, to change the representation of a bank in the second layer. So this is the first layer. In the second layer, we have a representation for bank. We, have, we also have a representation for service. We did, I didn't plot it over here. So basically, the second layer is gonna consider the context. So, so basically to modify, use one, la one layer of network to consider the context. So the model is a little bit complicated than this. So basically each word is not, con con is each word is not re only represented by a, a vector. In the history, like 10 years ago, people proposed like a adjective should use a matrix because uh, the, the, the purpose of adjectives is, more, is to modify other words. So if you modif uh, multiply a, a matrix with a vector, you still get a vector. So people use matrix to represent adjectives 10 years ago. But then, then people find out, no, that's not necessary. So we just represent each word as a vector. But we represent a more complicated vector. So which is uh, each word is going to be represented by three vectors. K, V, Q, K, Q, V. The idea of V is the value of this word. OK? The reason we want to represent three, th three, uh, three vectors, one reason is like this. Because remember, um, service has, the word service has two roles. The word, word service is going to modify the meaning of bank. The word server has its own representation in the second layer. So if we, if we train the model, the model is gonna get, a, get some training signal from top. It's gonna modify it. So if we, if we only keep one vector for service, it's confusing because we don't know this vector is used for modify other words or it's used to actually represent its own value. So that's why each word, we have two, three vectors instead of one. So in three vectors, each word is gonna, values represent its value. Q is called a query. Queries to coordinate with other relevant word to say which, which word I, I allow, allow to modify my, my meaning. Okay, so in that case, I, it's like this. So Q here for bank is going to, to be used to query the query to query K of the. So if you query, you will use query of bank to query the K of the word, find okay, the is not very relevant. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to use the word the to, to, to modify my, my meaning a lot. So if I use Q to query K 
okay of service. I found, that, okay, these two vectors are very similar, so I'm going to allow service to modify my meaning more than using the word the. So this is a KQV, why you use the, again, V just means value of the current word. Query is, used by query, I used this query to access a key of other words to see which word is matching me more. And key is just key of this word to accept the query from other words. So, so this is a very similar key, a key query in a value in information retrieval, except all this model, all, all this parameter can be trained. But this is a key point of transformer. So transformer, if you say GPT, the T is means transformer. So this is basically the key idea of transformer. Transformer is a little bit more complicated than this, but that's fine, so we are not going to go to details. But the key idea is like this attention. So we are going to send a queue to query other keys to say which one we are going to use that to modify my meaning. Those words is getting more, my, more attention from me. Me means I, I'm the word bank. I'm the word bank, you are the word service. I'm going to give you more attention to modify my meaning. So this is this, this attention model. So transformer is based on this ideal. The structure is a little bit more complicated, but it's fine, we're not going into details. But again, so many models are based on transformer. One is called BERT. So BERT is like a, this, the cassette is called GPT. So GPT, the full name, now you can get it. It's called a generative pretrained transformer. It uses transformer to generate, to generate that next word, okay? But BERT is a little bit different. different. BERT is bidirectional. BERT is not generated the word. BERT uses the, the word in both direction, both direction, the history in the future, to generate the current word. So why is different? Because uh, if I give you a sentence to predict uh, about the restaurant in Kingston, I want to predict this sentence positive about uh, as restaurant or negative. So I have, I have access to the whole sentence. I don't need to generate any, any sentence. I just remove one sentence to force the model to generate that, that word. And then if I train this, train in this way, then I can I train the model to actually learn the, 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 the whole sentence. So the basic difference between the bird bidirectional and the GPT, BERT is same famous, it's very famous. Even public, the public know GPT more. So BERT is bidirectional, they remove one word in the center, in, in, in the middle of sentence to predict it. And the GPT is always generated the next sentence. So that's called, why it's, it's called generative. So which one we, we should use? Depending on the task. If your task is generative, like you ask a question, then you give your answer, you need to generate something. You use, use a generative version. If you are not trying to generate new things, you just predict, give your sentence, you predict it's, 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 pos it's positive, negative, you use a verb. But they can use, they can use to, with, to each other through as well. So we're not, not gonna talk about that. But in general, the generative is over here, they generate new content. Uh, BERT is bidirectional, it's more discriminate model. But it can use, they can also use to, I mean, ChatGDP can also use to, to, to make classification as well, not only generate, they can generate answer directly. Anyway, we're well, not gonna do that, that details, but again, so, so far I hope uh, things are clear. The key idea of GPT is based on a transformer, and I just talked about a transformer, and it's based on generative model, it's a generative model, which is a, how to train the model is to let the model generate next words. So, once the model, again, so there's many, some workers talk about the limitation of this kind of self-attention model. So basically, when you we know recurrent neural networks is same powerful as, as any tuning machine, but actually those attention model is not as powerful as, as some previous models uh, theoretically. For example, some language like a uh, you know the party language, party, party language is like a um, only contains two words. One word is zero. One word is one, and a, a sentence is combination of this one or zero, and then um, any. Any sentence with even order number of one, order number of one is in this language. Any sentence with even number of one is not in this language. So this is a very simple language. So those languages, if you test, use it to test the, uh, those models, those models in some situations, they cannot regularize this language. So basically there's some theoretical work to, add to, to, to study what's the limitation of self-attention um, about those. So let's move on. So again, so once the model is trained, so far we just talk about training the model. Train the model is easy. You go to Queen's Library, grab all the electronic version, remove some words, uh, feed them to that framework, and train that models, train the parameters, and to predict those removed words. Then training is finished. So once you finish training the model, you are going to use it. So when you use it, there's different ways to use it. One is fine tuning, 
means like whenever you have a specific task, you just use your data, provide your data to the, to the model to tune the parameter a little bit towards your task. Okay, this is, a, this is called fine tuning. Uh, recently, there's a technology called parameter efficient tuning. Basically, because a fine tuned mod model is too huge, the model is often like a, for, chat, for GPT-3, uh, the model size is uh, 175 billion number of parameters. It's too big. So for fine tune the model, you need to fine tune all the parameters, which is not good. So parameter efficient tuning is like only, there's some, some, some smart way to only fine tuning a small uh, m amount of parameters for your specific task. Okay, this is going to be very important because you can fine tune the model for a group of people if you want to adapt the model to some people. So if you don't need to tune the, the whole uh, the, the entire parameters. The third type of use end is I do not even tune the model. I do not change the model's parameter. This is very amazing. So I only give some example. I just give you this example. Okay, Rogers have five tennis ball. He he buys two more cans of tennis ball, and then and then ask a question, how many tennis balls he have? The answer is 11. I just give this example to, Ch to GPT and then ask another question to ask answers. Sometimes they can good, give me good answer. So this is called in-context learning. The difference of in-context learning and the other model is like, I do not need to train model anyway. I do not need to train the model. I do not need to change the parameters. All I need to do, do is just show some example. Okay, so uh, there's a new technology called a uh, chain of thoughts. It's like uh, when I show example, I'm, I'm not only give you the answer, how many tennis ball? I also gave you the, the, the chain of thoughts, how I got that answer. So when I demonstrate this example, I also not only give you the answer, but also give you the reasons. If I gave the example in this way, the model actually performs much better. So this is kind of in-context learning. You gave a, sh a few short of example for your task. And then the extreme case, oh, this only happened if the, uh, the model is large enough. Remember we talk about there's the models of, of different size in the history different language model with different size, like those many different language models. When the model is roughly over 50 billion parameters or 100 billion parameter, the model start to have this capability to do in-context learning, in which you don't need to tune the model. You just ask a question, they can answer, which is what ChatGPT can do. You do not need to tune the model, you just ask your question. So, so this is uh, in-context learning, and then there's a, uh, Zero short learning is like a, in many situations, I do not even provide an example. I just ask my questions, the answers give me an answer. So this is one thing that makes uh, ChatGPT works. It's like a, I train a huge language model, um, and then if the model is large enough, then it start to show this very nice pro, uh, um, characteristics we want. The second reason ChatGPT works is the, good, uh, the very friendly user face. Why is have friendly use of it. Remember, if we train the model in this way, uh, still in many cases, we ask a question, the, uh, the ChatGPT do not answer, answer our, our question itself very well. Because if our question is very complicated, there's some, some gram grammatical errors, the ChatGPT cannot understand it. But now if you try ChatGPT, even your question is very complicated, ChatGPT can understand it. This is contributed to the second block. It's called uh, uh, training from user feedback. So this is the second, um, um, building block that makes ChatGPT works. Again, the first building block, as I summarize, is you train a huge language model with a huge number of parameters to predict removed, remove the words. The second technology at the back of ChatGPT is give some user feedback to say, okay, what's this person still act, actually asked for? Okay, so how to train this is actually, is follow this framework from chat, uh, Instruct GPT, which is used by some previous version. The basic thing is I'm going to ask many people to write questions and answers. And then I'm going to use this, those, those to fine tune my model. Remember, we, we train a huge model, we fine tune the model, use this, uh, use this uh, human feedback, the question answer, question answer pairs. And then this is the first step. The second step, I'm going to use, have five or six different models. I'm going to ask a question, ask each model to answer. And then I'm going to ask human being to read which answer is the best. Then I'm gonna use the feedback from user, from reading from a user to train a model in a way, whenever you give me a question and an answer, I can read how, how good this answer is. So this is the second step. Basically the second step, I get a good reader. Whenever you give me a question and answer pairs, I can read how good this question answer pair is. 
in the third step, I'm going to use whenever I'm, well, I'm going to fine tune this first uh, model again. It's like a, whenever I give a question to the model, they give me answer. I'm going to rate, use the model train in the second stage to rate it. How good that answer is. I use that information to train the first model again. So this is a, uh, it's called a reverse learning from user feedback. This also makes the model really, really good to understand humans' questions and answer it. But this model is going to slightly reduce the capacity of the model in traditional tasks. Because if you tune the model towards users' uh, question answers, if you use the model to do the traditional task, which is less re relevant to, uh, to, to, to question answering, for example, if we ask, use the model to do translation from English to French, the model may do worse, if a little bit worse. But there's, there's some technology to mitigate that. So basically, this is the second component. So the second component is, the second component is like a user, use the user feedback to tune the model to, uh, uh, to, to make the, to understand the user's intentions and to answer it better. So this is the major um, two components of GPT, ChatGPT. But ChatGPT as uh, one of the, I think this is CEO of Open, OpenAI, the company who, which make, made ChatGPT make comments. ChatGPT is incredibly limited but good enough at some things to create a misleading impression of greatness. So basically, when that basically means ChatGPT is very good. It can be used in many situations, um, as I already gave some example, and I believe it's gonna create more, um, it's gonna actually create many more opportunities uh, and applications. But sometimes, if you don't use it wisely, then it can, um, you, you have some, some, some um, risk you have to use it so that's why t the today's talk after that uh, and you probably don't understand all the details but you should know like a, for example the facts or if you are working on something really rely on the facts of some domains ChatGPT may not generate those facts very well so you should be a little bit more careful so when you design this exam you want a student don't to use ChatGPT to answer the question you probably can put some trick over there so so this is a limitation of ChatGPT. Uh, there's many discussion about the limitation of ChatGPT. Um, this is just one of them. I list more of them off here. Um, basically, um, those are many interesting discussion. But I summarize some of them over here. It's like, a, one is a factuality. So factuality is when you ask ChatGPT, sometimes ChatGPT generates incorrect answer and also pretend they are, they are good. And then it's caused by limitation of training data. Remember, ChatGPT is trained by data available before September of 2020, 2021. And all the information after that may, ChatGPT may not, may, not, not, may not have the ability to answer that. So nowadays, like Microsoft, a different company, they put a lot of efforts to, to, um, to solve this problem. Because again, uh, you cannot train ChatGPT every month or even every two months, because it's too expensive. So the second re reason is like, uh, it cannot use its own knowledge. Um, if you ask a questions like, uh, um, which will use some knowledge they already know in the model, but they still not use that knowledge very well. Hallucination, and also it's if, uh, affected, uh, because, uh, as affected by the ho how the fact is saved. Again, so everything is saved as a uh, model parameters, the connections between, the weight of connection between neural networks, between neurons. So that's going to, that's ways, um, it's going to not guarantee like uh, the facts that mentions is, is correct. So this is a, but this is critical for many applications, like a legal application. If you want to recommend uh, how much these people is going to be paid for, for injury, then if they use different laws and uh, laws from different region, it will not work. The reasoning, the second um, problem is like a reasoning. ChatGPT can do a very good reasoning, but uh, still uh, my, my student tested many reasoning problem we are working on. So still ChatGPT is not very good uh, compared with some traditional model. The sex third is sensitive to input. Now I can give you an example like this. So for this one, I can give you an example. If you ask a ChatGPT, uh, what's the logical relationship between these two sentences? They're going to say, oh, entailment. The first sentence entails the second. And then if you ask, tell me why. They're going to tell you why, but also modify the answers to, from entailment to contradiction. So basically means ChatGPT, what ChatGPT is doing to, is to maximize the probability of the sentence it generated but probably not really um, care about some critical uh, reasoning um, logic, logic ins inside of the system. So we have some example over here. Um, it's not very good at some, some 
math mathematical problem, which is if the model is uh, if the problem is in interconnected with the um, with uh, common sense, some some um, mathematical problems. Um, I can give you some example. If uh, yeah, I guess we don't have time. Up, uh, it's not useful for understanding language itself. Again, so we 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 have a build, uh, our brain is a black box for us, pretty much. And ChatGPT is also a black box. We build another black box to mim mimic our black uh, black box. So it's not, it does not help too much in understanding, for example, language itself. I think this is uh, the, one of the major critical from Chomsky. And then. Then um, it's un un unstable for some high stake problems. So uh, for research, we have, we have a lot of it to do, and also data privacy. If we talk about uh, the data from from ho um, from the hospital, pay people is very hesitant to upload the data to to ChatGPT to do classification or do generation. And explainability is also an issue. So the model cannot explain. If you ask a why, the model is actually tell not tell you why they make a decision. Is they just tell you why to make the generated text to have the highest probability. That's the difference. Um, so, so far I think this is a, um, what about ChatGPT and the, uh, the, why it works. I hope uh, we have like, uh, the brief, you have pre brief idea about why it works, um, what's a major component. Again, if we, if we summarize it, the major component is one component about a huge language model that predict the missed, missed the word. The second is human feedback. This is a major compa component. So again, so for some of this problem, I'm going to mention, for example, for reasoning. For reasoning, it's still not working very well. I'm going to give you one or two more examples about in some tasks we do want to the model to, to do better reasoning. Um, for example, if you ask it, uh, the premise, last year, all company listing last stock, stock changes, saw, saw the cost grow more than expected, even after adjusting the inflation. And uh, if this is premise, if this is uh, your database have this information, all company in Nasdaq, the cost increase. And then I ask this question, okay, whether Google report cost increases or not. So you should know if Google, if you know Google is in Nasdaq, then you know that if this is true, this is true. So another example is like, uh, if I ask uh, in last research confirmed, uh, last research confirmed COVID-19 caused many, many problems. And then we are gonna ask hypothesis. Uh, we are hypothesis, no health issue on the uh, circulatory system are related to COVID. So whether, if we know this, whether this hypothesis is true or not. So remember we have a lot of database to tell you many tru truth or, and then we, we want to make some hypothesis, make some conclusion based on the database. So computer need to have this capacity, but so far, um, ChatGB, you cannot rely on their reasoning step. So, so for example, the lab here, I just, uh, probably just two or three minutes, talk about the work here we want to combine um, the, the, the advantage of the network is the logic to combine the advantage. The basic idea is we want to make sure the uh, neural models to use the neural model to encode the, uh, for example, word meaning, phrase meaning, but make sure when they do the reasoning, they follow the logic steps we want them to follow. So this is a key idea. I'm not going to go to details, um, but again, so this is um, the key idea is we, we have some uh, logic on the model need to follow to make the uh, conclusion and we want to the, um, the, the model to follow those logic. But it seem, it's at the same time, we want the model to use neural networks to encode the meaning, like a convert the word to vector, and uh, calculate their similarity and, and relationship in vector space, and then to support this decision. So I'm gonna go to, uh, skip the detail. Again, so the key idea here is so we, we, we have work here in Junior Labs that's to combine, try to combine the advantage of logic and neural networks. So, I want to give a quick summary over here. So what we discussed here is like uh, today is like ChatGP and similar models that demonstrated um, how powerful such pre-trained language model can be. Actually, I want to comment. They work surprisingly well because people know this model is powerful, but until ChatGPT OpenAI show us the result, nobody is gonna say, okay, how much this model, how powerful this model can be? Because people also know the limitation. Just, just not know, maybe this model is not going to be as good, but OpenAI, the major contribution of OpenAI is true. Even this very simple, logically very simple model can do very powerful things. So this is one conclusion. The second is that they are making or will make extensive set of real life application possible. I believe this year, next year, you're going to see more and more applications. As I said, because of the example I show you to highlight the, the Excel sheet, 
you can connect that with uh, with a speech uh, speech text AK. Okay, you can maybe next year in your in your workspace you can say highlight all these one thousand tables, the value between twenty and thirty. They can highlight for you. So so there's a lot of there's a, recently there's something called Auto GPT. Is try to you uh, try to connect a chat GPT with many different applications. You can say you can say okay, organize a party, send an email to all my friends. Then you can send an email to all your friends already. Um, but it, when you use it again, so um, be careful. Um, they make mistakes. Um, they also bring concerns about the model. So many people as educators, they have. A okay, now um, years um, several months ago, I gave a talk in Smith School of Business. Um, I mean, maybe some, some people apply university, they, they write thesis, or they write essays using ChatGPT to help them. So there's concerns about uh, education, about uh, uh, risk, and about different things. Major, majorly, the, the concern comes from two sides. One side, of people is going to say, okay, AGI is there, um, so scared. Uh, a second side is, okay, the model is so risky. Mm. But actually, after today's talk, I think we should not take either of these steps. We should be careful. Like uh, the, this model is going to change the world, change the many applications, life in the world, and, and our work. But at the same time, it's not that powerful enough to be safe to be deploying many high-stake problems. So this is a, a second comment I want to make here. After your test talk, you have some take-home messages. See some take-home messages, maybe. I'll think of the third is the framework has its own fundamental limitations. We already talked some of them. Think about the example. I asked them to drive from Ottawa to to. Kingston to Ottawa. So that can, they can give you a wrong answer. Um, so it's unclear if such framework can achieve AGI, artificial general intelligence, by themselves. Basically, artificial, artificial uh, general, uh, general in, uh, in, intelligence means we have built a model which can, like human beings, can, so, uh, can solve different problems at the same time. So whether we can, this framework is good enough to reach AGI by itself, it's unclear. Uh, but I doubt they will, for the reason I mentioned. I think this model has fundamental limitation. Think about how they save the knowledge. In the history of AI, there's big uh, arguments about how we should save knowledge. We should save them distributed in the, in the, in, in the model in, in weights. Or either we should save them locally as a table, like a Wikipedia, we have information, we have table in Wikipedia. It's very convenient to see the table, say, OK, how to drive from Ottawa to Kingston, Ottawa. So this is local. If you change some local knowledge, you just change that knowledge. It don't affect the other part. If you change the knowledge in this neural network, if you change one parameter, it affects all facts. So that's another big problem. So I, I doubt it will reach AGI by, by just use these models for, the, uh, for many reasons we discussed. Um, but it's likely that such model will be the key component of a final AGI solution. So I'm going to end my finish my talk with uh, one image here. So with a, a letter over here, reach the moon. So this is actually this image is generated by AI itself, generated by diffusion model. So basically, m many people use this to comments like, uh, okay, the current knowledge is just building a ladder. It's not never going to reach the moon. I think this analogy, we need to be think a little bit more. Because like, uh, this technology, I think it's part of the final solution. It's not build a ladder which never going to reach more. It's build something useful. So we should be careful about that. At the same time, this, also, this analogy also might remind us, um, we should be careful. Like, even some technology we have right now, even if they look very promising, but they may not be the final solution. So for the future, there's not, nobody can predict future. I think uh, um, Alan Kay said the best way to predict the future is invented. But there's some people put some thoughts over here. Like uh, Lacuan, think about uh, the current model is not good. We still need all the model, like a video model, different modalities, latent variable models, reasoning. And Daniel, uh, Gary Marcus have different meaning. Uh, they, these two often have fights on, on on, on, the, on, the, on the forum, but the, the, this is a list given by Car uh, Gary Marx's uh, neurosymbolic models, large scale knowledge, and reasoning. Both of them actually re mention reasoning. There's uh, some common um, ideas. And uh, rich cognitive models. And Levick uh, also talk about, which is a professor in the University of Toronto, talk about like uh, for AI scientists, we should avoid be overly swayed by what appear to be the most promising approach of the day. 
So basically, again, so back to Alan Key's uh, comments, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So I'm going to repeat this future page again, so make it empty. Because we have many students here, we want you to fill this empty through your work. Again, just remember, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Thank you very much. <laughs>